So in this video we're going to have a look at the light dependent reactions that happen in photosynthesis. Um, just a reminder of this, they happen in the thylakoid membrane, which I've indicated here. And remember that this side is within the thylakoid, so it's the thylakoid space. And outside here is the stroma, um, so still within the chloroplast, but outside of the thylakoid. Um, now, as you can see from this membrane, it's quite complicated. Uh, we've got a couple of photosystems that we've already seen in a different video, which are within, of, within the membrane. And then we've also got a number of different proteins that are inside of the membrane as well, which we'll go through as we go through this video. Um, so for this video, I'm actually only going to be writing some key terms on here, um, but I will be talking through each of the different steps just in the interest of space on my piece of paper. Um, okay, so with the light dependent reactions, the first step is what is called photo activation. So number one, is photo activation. Now this happens at the first photosystem, which actually confusingly is photosystem two, this one here. Now photo activation is the process of a photon of light coming in to this photosystem. being absorbed by an accessory pigment, so these blue blobs that are on the outside of the photosystem. The photon gets transferred between all of the different accessory pigments until it reaches the green one at the bottom, which remember is chlorophyll A. So this is photoactivation. The second stage that happens is photolysis. Now this word can be split up quite easily to determine the meaning. We've already seen photo and we've already seen lysis before. So photo means anything to do with light and lysis is splitting. Okay, so with photolysis, we're splitting something with light and specifically with this, it is water that is being split. So remember, this is one of the reactants going into photosynthesis and this is being split into its component parts, which are a proton, an electron, and oxygen. The oxygen, remember, is one of the first products of photosynthesis, so the oxygen is then just a waste product. So we've already got our first reactant and our first product here that is happening due to photolysis. We're going to have a look at this electron. So this electron is transferred to the photosystem to this chlorophyll A, where already this photon of light has made its way to the chlorophyll A as well. So the photon of light will ex excite the electron that has been taken from the water and it will transfer that electron up here to the reaction centre and is captured by the electron acceptor that is within that reaction centre. So up here we now have an excited electron. Following that we then have our first electron transport chain here which then moves down to our second photosystem, which nice and confusingly is photosystem one. Okay, so we've got to get down this first electron transport chain to get here. Now within this electron transport chain, there are three key proteins that you do need to know the names of. Okay, so this first one here, I'm just gonna label PQ because of space. This is plastoquinone. We then have in the middle here, I'm just gonna label it CC. This is the cytochrome complex. And then this last one here, I'm gonna label PC. This is photocyanin, and this is an electron acceptor. With the cytochrome complex, this is important because it is going to be pumping protons into the thylakoid space. Okay, very similar to what we've seen before in respiration in that electron transport chain. So this excited electron is passed from each of these carriers until it gets to this final acceptor here and transferred to the photosystem one, where it then is accepted here by chlorophyll A. During this process, same as in respiration, the electron moves down here and as it goes, it is releasing energy. That energy release means that the cytochrome complex is able to pump um, protons 
into the thylakoid space. So protons are coming through. The cytochrome complex and coming into this thylakoid space. So if you remember from our drawing of the chloroplast, thylakoids are these flattened sacs which are quite thin. So the pumping of these protons into here means that the concentration gradient builds up very, very quickly because there's very little space inside of the thylakoids. With these protons, once they've started to build up here, Obviously, that is why the ATP is required to pump them across because we're going against the concentration gradient. You're forcing these protons the wrong way across that membrane. These protons build up and up and up in here. And they will then pass through this final proton, protein sorry, at the end. And we've already seen this proton protein before in respiration. This is ATP synthase. So the role of this is to create ATP as protons just pass through and out into the stroma. So the first thing that is produced, because these protons are moving through ATP synthase here, out into the stroma, the production here is ATP. And remember, this is one of the things that we need to transfer over to the light-dependent reactions. Okay, so if we come back over to our electron transport chain, what we've got here is an electron here, which has been de-energized as it's passed through this electron transport chain and it is now with this chlorophyll A molecule here in photosystem one. So the next thing that has to happen is another photon of light. Is absorbed by photosystem one. And again, it goes through the accessory pigments until it reaches chlorophyll A again and excites that electron up to the reaction center where it is accepted by the electron acceptor. So again here, the electron is excited. And this is the same electron that has come right from this start here, which was formed from the splitting of water. Okay, so it's passed through this first electron transport chain, is now with chlorophyll A, and then becomes excited due to this absorption of this photon of light. So we're now in the reaction center here in photosystem one. This then passes through the second electron transport chain here. And again, there are some key terms you need to know for this. I'm going to label this one FD. This one is ferrodoxin and it's an electron carrier. Um, this final one here is another enzyme and this one is NADP reductase. So the role of NADP reductase is to take the electrons that have passed through this electron transport chain here and add them to NADP plus plus H plus. Okay, so what we've got is up here, we've got NADP plus plus H plus. We've got this electron that has come through this electron transport chain. So we're gonna add in this electron NADP reductase is the enzyme that is going to catalyze this reaction. So it's going to add this electron to these two components here and it will make our second product of the light dependent reactions which is NADPH. Okay, so we're reducing NADP plus to create NADPH and this is then also used in the light independent reactions later, along with ATP. In terms of this, um, to actually fully reduce NADP plus to create NADPH, you need two electrons to do this. 